Right, 16 April 2024, and today I am very happy to give you the update for this morning. So these are the daily morning updates on Gambakwe Media, and we cover political stories, business stories, sports stories, and sometimes we cover military stories. So today I've got a big uh, military story taking place. There are massive developments taking place in the Zimbabwe military. And this is also affecting parliament. It's also affecting ZANU-PF. And this has become a very, very big problem. And we're soon going to see a major development, especially in parliament, where two factions of ZANU-PF are now operating. So two factions of ZANU-PF, one which is controlled by uh, the Mnangagwa group and one that is controlled by the General Chuenga group. So if you look at uh, what has been happening over the past week, MPs have not been able to get uh, coupons, fewer coupons. They've not been able to get their hotel bills paid. And that is part of the factionalism that is taking place in ZANU-PF. And very soon, there is going to be likely a vote of no confidence in uh, Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Mudenda. So the reason why this is happening is because uh, Jacob Mudenda is said to be aligned to General Chwenga, and this has infuriated the group that is aligned to Oxilam Nangagwa. Oxilam Nangagwa is right at the top with their sons. She's operating with their sons all over the country, and she also has put them in parliament. She has put some of them in the military, and she's got what is called the cookout rallies. So the cookout rallies are taking place around the country. During the cookout rallies, Oxilam Nangagwa is drumming up support for one of her sons to take over as i said yesterday people are saying it's likely going to be collins or if that doesn't work they're going to put uh, emerson jr and if that doesn't work the last option is kuda kuda Mnangagwa is already in parliament he's already a deputy minister and tonga Mnangagwa is moving around with barbara uh, Barbara Rodzi, and they are conducting these rallies around the country. During these rallies, they're praising Oxilam Nangabwa and the, the, the arrest of nine women this weekend. This is what has alarmed the security forces, people in the military, people in security. They had to intervene yesterday because Oxilia shouted from the stage to say that these women must be arrested and the nine women were arrested and were detained overnight. And police are now backtracking. Uh, there's a statement today that this was an overreaction on the part of people on the ground. But you know very well that nothing happens where a first lady is involved, where there is no intervention from the top. So if a first lady is involved, anything that happens there is to do with very top people in the army. So there's nothing to do with uh, not only the army, the army, the police, or the security structures. They're involved. And when you see them backtracking like this, there has been a fight within internally, and it is clear that not everyone is happy, especially people that support uh, General Juwenga. He's got massive support within ZANU-PF, and he is next in line. However, what is happening now is an attempt to bypass him by Oxilam Nangagwa, and this is causing a lot of problems. Oxilam Nangagwa is also attending senior meetings of ZANU-PF. She's arriving at a Politburo meeting meetings central committee meetings and when she arrives there it makes it very difficult for other people to contribute she is almost a de facto aggressive guy right now <laughs> dr amai has come back uh, in another uniform and this is a developing story as i said we must look at parliament there are two factions of zanu pf now fighting over there and it is likely that jacob mdenda who is seen as being on the chuenga faction is going to have a vote of no confidence passed on him very very soon so watch parliament very closely the events that are taking place there have never happened before where mps are denied fuel mps are denied hotels and they have to sleep out in their cars outside and Mnangaba is going to be supplying the cars he's got 80 vehicles lined up that are supposed to be given away instead of them being given by parliament uh, these cars are now going to be coming directly from Mnangaba as part of this attempt to sway mps to support either Mnangaba's extended bid or Mnangabwa sons to take over. So that is a crazy situation that is developing. 
and guys in the security sector are not happy. I've talked to a few guys myself uh, in the military and they are very unhappy about this. And as you know, we recently had six or, or even seven generals that were retired in the past week. Uh, that was confirmed. So let's see what happens. This is a developing story and we're going to be seeing a lot more happening regarding uh, the Zimbabwe military and especially in parliament. So the next place that you need to watch is parliament. I now want to quickly run through some stories uh, and then we'll close this. We have updates every two or three hours now happening on gambago.com. So I don't have to make this as long as ever before. Now let's look at um, uh, my Titi's daughter. Uh, there's a massive development that has taken place overnight. Uh, young Fifi, she had pictures of her leaked or uh, around the internet. And the person that was responsible for leaking those pictures has now been arrested. He is called Amin Maka and is currently at Highlands Police Station. So that is his picture that I'm displaying here. Uh, that is the young man, Amin Maka. That was the boyfriend of Fifi, the boyfriend of, Pipi, of Fifi, who was leaking the pictures. He's now been arrested. And um, he is obviously going to be in a lot of trouble because he was blackmailing her for over a year, getting payment because uh, he was saying he was going to leak those pictures. But obviously what I say to young ladies is, do not share your pictures with anybody. Uh, there's no need to do that. Uh, it's terrible for, for those pictures to eventually find their way out in the public. So if you're a young lady, keep your clothes on. But in the case of young Fifi, what I've said is she needs counseling. And if Felicitas calls me, we're going to arrange for her, to, uh, for Fifi to get counseling. We're also going to arrange for her uh, to get herself, Felicitas, to get counseling. And if she's not employed, obviously she must call me, then we'll make a plan for her so that she's not uh, someone who's not uh, having anything to do. So it's very, very important and to take this very seriously. It's not a, a small thing that has happened for a young person. So the leaking of such pictures is very, very bad and I do not support it. Then when talking of the uh, of the security services, so I want to go back to security services. There's a leading story in the Newsday newspaper. There are no uniforms for police. Junior police are going to parade wearing civilian clothes. So someone can be wearing a uniform with no belt or they can be wearing a uniform with no shoes or without a hat or they do not have a uniform at all. So some police officers have been deployed without a uniform. That is in the Newsday newspaper. And... Um, the spokesperson of the police has said that those uniforms are going to be available from today. So they've got a massive backlog and there's no uniforms in the police force. What an embarrassment for, for the Zimbabwe police. It's terrible what's happening over there. Then we're looking at the Zimbabwean businessman, uh, Evans Katumba. His body has been found in South Africa. He was kidnapped on the 22nd of March, Friday the 22nd of March, from his new club. He's got a new nightclub. He had a new nightclub called Yugos, and Evans Katumba has been found dead uh, in South Africa, KZN. So Evans Katumba is a fuel businessman. He is in the fuel industry. He was also in the entertainment industry. He was very flamboyant, lots of uh, expensive goods. He came to South Africa about 10 years ago as a fuel attendant, and he had built himself up to become one of the biggest suppliers of diesel in South Africa. He bought the club called Yugos, where aka the south african rapper was supposed to perform before he was killed and some men ak 47s came and abducted him and they demanded 2.5 million runs the family paid 1.5 million runs in cash but after that payment no one ever responded and the board was not uh, the, the katumba was not released as a uh, alive then yesterday the body was found and this is a developing story we do not know who killed him and the other matter here is that police were not supposed to be involved during the drop-off of the cash of the 1.5 million. So I do not know if police were involved, but this is a massive, massive story. There's a lot of kidnapping uh, taking place of business people here in South Africa, especially in places like East London, uh, places like um, KZN. There's a lot of kidnapping of business people for ransom. And sometimes they get released, sometimes they don't. So in this case, uh, it is a very important case because we also know that aka was murdered when he was supposed to perform at the new club that was bought by katumba so i do not know if there's a link but this is a case that is being widely watched uh, by everyone here in south africa 
Then let's go to the Zig. The Zig has crashed massively on the black market. Uh, it has crashed to the extent that some people were even selling it at 30 yesterday. And the reason being, there is no formal way for people who are in retail, so ordinary people, to buy the Zig formally. So the, the, the only way to change your money is to go to the street. And the people that have money on the streets, they don't have enough supply. So this has pushed uh, the value of the US dollar. They, they don't... Uh, so let's say you want to buy ATAM, you want to buy food. These things are making it very difficult. But someone is supplying that Zig. And I'm sure that there is a way of finding out what's happening there. However, the solution is to have a retail, a way for retail to buy uh, forex to buy and sell forex so if someone wants to buy dollars and they would zig they should be able to buy that in a beirut change but they haven't done so and i've been saying this from the beginning money must only be available to deposit and withdraw from the atm and for retail there must be a way where i can take money from my pocket i walk into beirut change and make a change formally get a receipt and walk away so this is not currently in place and the zig has crashed um tooling mube and the guys in the police have sent out soldiers and police into the street to clean up the street. But that is not where the problem is. The problem is where does the money come from to buy those zigs? And that money is coming straight from people in the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. As I said, the problem is at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. That is where the rot is. And as long as Mshayavan is not cleaned up uh, the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, there is nothing that is going to happen. Uh, currently, business is very depressed uh, because shop owners don't want to take the old money. And the ZIG is trading in ways that you do not really understand. Price has not been discovered. People don't know exactly what things are supposed to cost in ZIG. So, for example, if a piece of chicken is costing 20 ZIG, is that correct or not? If airtime is cost, costing 250 ZIG, is that correct or not? So that process is going to take a lot of time. And business is currently very, very depressed. And people are not buying and selling as they're supposed to be. Then let's go to Mbuzi Interchange. Um, Mbuzi Interchange has grown to a halt. Nothing is happening at Mbuzi Interchange. In fact, if they're not careful, this construction site is going to become a very big problem. Uh, they've not passed, paid the suppliers. Uh, Tagure is failing to supply cement. And the money is gone. The money is finished. They, they've paid whoever they paid. And that money is gone. No one knows what is going to happen. Because the owners of the properties. So if you look around this, this site. There are properties that are around here. The owners of these properties have not been paid. So construction can continue before those people are paid. And this is a very, very serious problem. Uh, and I do not know how they're going to solve it. As I said, Mnangawa's projects are not finishing. Uh, the road from Bait Bridge to Harare is a mess. If you drive over there, you will likely lose your engine. Uh, it's going very, very bad. Uh, I'll show you a video of the road from Bed Bridge to Harare and you see how bad it is so I'm just waiting for that video then I'll show you how bad it is it's terrible you cannot drive uh, all the dams that Mnangagwa was constructing are not finished uh, the airport is not finished nothing that Mnangagwa started is finished and these the, the, the contractors are not being paid so as far back as 2019 contractors have not been paid for the work that they did for the government of Zimbabwe. So it's a terrible mess, and the Mnangagwa government is going to collapse very, very soon. I, I've been saying this for a long time. Give it until the end of this month, and the ED government is going to collapse. Uh, Mnangagwa, Arku Raivan, Menzara, and now they're arresting people. <laughs> so they are, they are started arresting, uh, especially the arrest of the, these women has brought everything to the head. This has been the worst uh, nightmare for Mnangagwa uh, and his wife, Oxilia Mnangagwa, who is the most unpopular person currently. Oxilia is so unpopular in ZANU-PF that people are avoiding her. That's how bad it is. But the failure to finish projects by Mnangagwa is becoming a big, big problem for him because that is visible. You cannot hide the fact that Mbuzi is not finished. You can say by July, and then July comes, you say by July next year. <laughs> that is where Mnangagwa is going. We're going to a point where Mnangagwa is going to say by July 23rd, <laughs> then it will be done. That is where we're going right now. But it doesn't make me laugh. It's just, it's sad. Right, let's go to the next story. Uh, there are two young men who beat up police yesterday. Uh, it's a viral video. And those two young men have been arrested. 
So you can see the two young men here. Uh, in the top clip, you can see them beating up the policemen. And they've been arrested now. Uh, I'm sure they're getting what they deserve in police custody. And their sister is into illicit substances. That is why they were so violent. So they thought they were defending their sister. But it's unfortunate because now they've been arrested. Then if you go to Sadak, someone has taken over the Sadak Facebook page. Uh, this one here. And I think Facebook has now dropped this Facebook page. It's the military website of uh, Sadak in Goma in the DRC. So someone has taken over this website and Sadak has disowned this website or Facebook page and it has now been taken down. Unfortunately, I believe that there's poor security uh, within Sadak. Remember, their website was had a few, weeks, a few weeks back. So I believe that there's poor security over their assets, their, in, uh, their electronic assets. So these guys are easily able to take over these um, Sadak assets and communicate messages that don't align with Sadak. So that is what has happened here. And then in South Africa, uh, President Jacob Zuma has done it again. He's married a new wife. Uh, you can see the young wife there, and I've covered the child's face. So they've got a young child. So that is Uma Koti, looking very nice. Uh, she is very young. I cannot believe how young this girl is, but she is with uh, uh, Zuma, uh, the new president of, uh, the incoming president of South Africa. So Zuma is so popular uh, that everyone is falling all over each other to try to fight him. He's so popular that he's going to make a big impact in the South African election, which is coming out on the 29th of May. That's when there's going to be an election here, a presidential election. He's going to change everything for the ANC. And there's a massive fight with the former public protector, Tulima Donzela, saying people should not vote for Zuma. So she's gone out to say that. Then in terms of the HIV medication that I was telling you about, there is now a new injection in Zimbabwe, which allows you to be safe from HIV infection, instead of taking every day, you just get an injection, and if you are safe, you won't get HIV. So this is for high-risk people, and the Minister of Health has come out yesterday and given the figures. Over 200,000 people are now on PrEP in Zimbabwe. So that is women, you don't know what your husband is doing when he goes around, especially the, the guys that drive trucks, the guys that go in the military, the guys that are in the police who are deployed in various areas, uh, who tend to use uh, our sisters who stand on the corners. So if you know that you're in that position, then you need to get prep so that your your husband doesn't infect you or your wife doesn't infect you. And so far, 200,000 people are on prep. And apparently, the infection rates among Zimbabweans of HIV is now very, very low. So this is a good move by the Minister of Health. And this is funded by agencies such as USAID. I know USAID is funding it in Zambia, and I'm sure they're also funding it in uh, uh, in Zimbabwe. So when you say the US is not helping, don't think that way. <laughs> this is how they're helping you. They're keeping you alive, uh, especially for the women who are in vulnerable positions. I now want to look at my last story, which is a sports story. And this is to do with uh, Jordan Zemura. So Jordan Zemura is a UK-based player. And he has said he's no longer coming to play for Zimbabwe again because of the actions of Norman Mapeza. And this story is in the uh, in the H Metro newspaper. So he says, Nomen Mapeza, we used to wake them up at 6 a.m., make them do military-style training without any recovery plans. So he, he did not put in place any recovery plans. And this has angered the players that are coming from overseas who say they will no longer be coming to play as long as he is... Uh, the coach, Nomen Mapeza is the coach. So it's a big loss for Zimbabwe. This is a UK-based player, very good player, who, who is no longer playing for Zimbabwe. He's no longer going to be uh, playing for Zimbabwe. I want to look at the newspapers now, quickly. And I want today I'm going to look at the Herald newspaper. The Herald newspaper is published, so let me see what they're saying. And I want to obviously uh, make it clear that this newspaper has been made uh, into a joke by the Mnangagwa family. ZBC News is now a mess because everything is about ED and auxilia. Now they've made it even worse here at the Herald. And if you look at the Herald, it's saying Seb, Seb, uh, Second Republic attracts UK mining firm back to Zimbabwe. So th these things that they're saying here, uh, like the, the Mnangawa government, 
they are pretending as if everything is okay in Zimbabwe. The biggest problem in Zimbabwe is you cannot get your money back or out. Once you put your money in Zimbabwe, you can't get it out. How do you take out your money when the currency keeps uh, dropping the way it is? So that is the, the problem that we, we, we have here. Uh, and then we have the campaigning on ZIG. Obviously, they're campaigning for ZIG here. Yeah? High reserve ratios to stabilize ZIG. This is obviously fake. We all know very well that there are no reserves. And we all know that there's a problem at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. So the problem is not on the street. The problem is at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. If you don't solve the problem in the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, and if you don't create formal channels, the ZIG is just going to crash. There's nothing different from the ZIG and everything else. All the other currencies we've had have had the same uh, hype ahead of them, but it hasn't worked. So this is the problem, uh, and I, I, I challenge the Reserve Bank governor to have a proper interview with people who know, and also to seek advice from people who know. So uh, they, they are currently talking to people that don't really tell them the truth. And, and the truth is that the ZIG is being undone at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. It's being undone with poor uh, management of the banking sector. The banking sector is involved in money laundering. So the ban banking sector in Zimbabwe is part of the money laundering. And as long as the politics in the country is not solved, nothing is going to work. You cannot refuse to have dialogue with Chamisa and then expect everything to work. It won't work. Uh, it will never work. So now let's go to the comments quickly and I'll end this. Uh, it's now my time for gym. I need to, to go and work out. So let's look quickly. Uh, at Mkoma Gono, Mkoma, Mkoma Gono says, let's start, please. I want to go to sleep before the flood road me. <laughs> you wanted to start early, Mkoma Gono. I start at 5 a.m. every day. And now we've got someone who goes live at 10, 10 a.m. and also around 3 a.m. so that will keep you updated. Eventually, our plan is to go 24 hours. Uh, as, at Gambako Media, we're going to go 24 hours. And then Mkoma Gono says, thank you, Gambako. Good job uh, watching from Europe. Yes, I want you all to come back home. Uh, my brothers... All the resources that are in Zimbabwe are sufficient for all of us. When I'm in Angaba, they are the past, the future is where all of us are going to be back home, uh, driving to Vic Falls, driving to Kariba, driving to Nyanga with your family and friends, not in those places that you, you currently are. Mnangaba has got no plan and he needs to, uh, the Mnangaba era needs to come to an end very, very quickly. And then Mkoma Bidisha says, the ZIG is not working now. We can't communicate with our family. They can't buy data. Yes. Uh, and I tried to buy data yesterday. The prices are crazy. Uh, the prices are crazy. They're charging crazy prices. And then Mkoma Ray says, good morning, Gambakwe and everyone. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I really enjoy talking to you. And please support all our platforms. You can join the Gambakwe membership on uh, YouTube. You just go to our YouTube channel. You see a button that says join. You can help us there and support us every month as we are trying to build our head office in Harare. Thank you very much, everyone, and a good day to you all.